Hey everyone, this will be an extension to my previous video where we created our own signed repository. If you haven't watched that one, I encourage you to do so. To summarize what we did, we basically signed a package, created a repository around it, and installed it as a local repo in our yum configuration directory. In this video, we're going to build off of that and turn it into a network-enabled repository using HTTPD. We'll need to make some slight adjustments to SE Linux and FirewallD, and then we should be able to test our setup from our workstation. So first, what we'll do is log into App Server 4 just like so. There we go. And we'll need to elevate to a root shell, so we'll just run sudo su. And now we're going to need two packages. So we'll run yum install httpd and policy core utils python utils. We'll need that second package for the se manage command later to fix our labels. Now with that through, we'll need to add a configuration file to httpd. So what we'll do is head over to the httpd conf.d directory with cd etc httpd conf.d. There we go. And if we list the directory, we're going to copy this really helpful welcome.conf file and morph it into what we need. So we'll just run cp welcome.conf and we'll call our new file example repo.conf. Then we'll just edit that file. From here, what we're going to do is just delete some of these comments we don't need. And we can also delete that too. And we're going to change this directory to opt example repo. And we're going to add a little thing here, options plus indexes. And this will allow it to show the directory listing when we just try to view the web page with no index.html file. So that'll be good. Um, and then we can get rid of some of these aliases and make a new line. And we're going to change this alias to say example repo and make it opt example repo just like that, and then we can write and quit the file. Then what we'll need to do is adjust our permissions for our repository. So if we run the ls-ld command on var www.html, the default document root, we'll see that the permissions are 755 by default. So we're just going to mimic that with chmod-r for recursive, 755 opt and then example repo. So I'll just do that. And going back to ls, we can also check on the se Linux type context for the default HTTP documents. And as you can see, the context um, is httpd syscontent underscore t. And so if we run ls zd on our example repo directory, we'll see that we don't have the correct type context. So, I mean, it'll probably work anyways, since the user uh, context is relatively lenient, but it's best if we set everything right. So let's take a look at the man page for se manage. So we'll run apropos se manage, and we're looking for the one about F context. So we'll just run man se manage f context. And if you scroll down to the bottom here, there's a really helpful example that suits our needs exactly. So it's this se manage f context a t httpd sys content t, and then we just need to change this directory. So this regular expression over here is really the only tricky part. But luckily, we can just refer back to this document if we ever need to. So we'll actually just copy this and quit out of man and do the following. So we'll just paste it. And we're going to change this directory to slash opt example repo. 
and then just run that and it will regenerate an updated policy for us to use. So that'll just take a second. And then we're going to need to relabel that directory tree with restore con dash rv for verbose and then slash opt. And we'll see that it relabeled a bunch of files. Now what we're going to want to do is add the HTTP service to the firewall D zone so that we can access port 80 from our other VMs. So we'll run firewall dash cmd dash dash permanent, if I can spell that, and then add service HTTP. And there we go. And then we'll run firewall cmd dash dash reload to bring it into the running configuration. The last thing we're going to want to do is actually enable and start HTTPD. So you can do that with system CTL enable dash dash now HTTPD. And now it should be started and enabled. Now we can head over to Firefox on our workstation and check it out and see if it's accessible. So we'll just type in HTTP colon slash slash app server four. Whoops. There we go, that's better. And as you can see, we're able to access the server. Now the real test is, can we access slash example dash repo? And we can, so that's fantastic. And uh, what we'll do now is actually download this GPG key. So we'll just save that into our home folder. There we go. And we're going to install this key on our workstation and add the remote repo. So we'll head back to the terminal, but we'll, we'll make a new tab uh, so that we have a shell on workstation instead. Then we're going to copy that public key with sudo cp rpm gpg key example and put it in etc pki rpm gpg. There we go. And from there, we're also going to run sudo vim etc yum.repos.d and make an example.repo file. And then here we'll make a group called example repo, give it a name, and the base URL, this is important, we're going to type in http colon slash slash app server for slash example dash repo. Then we'll set gpg check to one and specify the key with gpg key equals etc pki rpm dash gpg and then rpm dash gpg dash key example. Um, there we go and we might need to add the file thing to it. All right, and now we can run yum update with sudo yum update just to get everything up to date. And there's our example repo. We can also check that with sudo yum repo list. And there it is. And so for the real test, we're going to try to install htop from our example repo. So we'll just run sudo yum install htop and say yes to that. And look at that, we'll be able to accept our new public key. So we'll just add it to the key ring. And there we go, bam, we just got a package from our remote repo. So that sounds like a victory to me. And we can actually expand on this further by using Ansible to install the public key and the yum configuration file to all of our other nodes. But that's a video for another day. So that'll wrap up this video. I hope I made it easy to follow along. Thanks for watching.